In this video, we're going to do a complete walkthrough of a production level scene. When recording animation live, one of the things you're always going to concern yourself with is that you're running at about 60 frames per second. You can see the frame rate on both iClone and Unreal at this point. Now let me go ahead and turn off Live Link. Now let's close this and maximize iClone. Now if you want to have the information and stats available to you, you want to do either Control F or go to Edit Preferences. Scroll down to Display and then check the checkbox for info. Now we'll be able to easily know how many frames per second we're running at. So if I hit play, you can see that we're running at between 55 and 60 frames per second. One of the ways we may be able to increase our frame rate is to actually turn off all rigid body and cloth simulations. So let's pause the playback, go back to our first frame, and then in the center of the interface at the very top, you'll see two green icons. One is the rigid body and one is the cloth simulation. You can just click on them to turn both of them off. Another way to speed up iClone is to actually change the interface setting from high to minimal. You'll see the figures update to a more simplified version of what they were. You can also change the quality level to minimal in the preferences. You just go to edit preferences and then scroll down to the real time render options and it's right there at the top. So at this point, we've optimized things as much as possible. Now, of course, if you have other programs running in the background, shutting them down will also help speed things along. So here you can see that we're actually running at 60 frames per second. But what happens when you're actually below 60 frames per second? What are your options? Well, let's look at this setup that we have here. We have both faceware real-time running, we have a Perception Neuron suit running, and we'd be adding Unreal to this as well. So this is probably causing the slowdown. One of the things that we could choose to do is actually add an additional computer. So we could go to the live link for Unreal, open it up, and under the settings tab, it looks like a little sun. Inside the settings window, we can actually type the IP address and the port address of a second machine, and this will allow us to share the workload between two computers. Now, even though I'm always trying to get 60 frames per second, the truth of the matter is that anything between 50 frames per second and 60 frames per second is going to capture your motion properly. All right, so now that we know that this is running well, let's check it with both programs and Live Link activated. Currently, we're seeing 60 frames per second in iClone. I'll click Activate Link, and we're still showing 60 frames per second. Now, in Unreal, let's show our frames per second. You're going to go to the little arrow in the upper left corner of your viewport and go to Show FPS which is Control shift h on your keyboard. On the right-hand side of our viewport here in Unreal, you're gonna see that we're well over 100 frames per second. Now we used Unreal last, so the focus for the computer is on Unreal. What this means is whatever application that you have last selected, the computer focuses on. And this can affect things. If we look at the other application, you'll see a difference in the frames per second. It's down to under 20 frames per second to 20 frames per second. But as soon as I click on iClone, you'll see that our frame rate jumps back up to around 60 frames per second. And Unreal is still at around 70 to 80 frames per second. So program focus matters. Here's an example of a scene that we can optimize. Now when I play this scene, it's running between 39 and 44 frames per second. But if we look at the Live Link plugin all the way to the left, you'll see that we actually have four characters linked. Now I'm going to unpilot the Unreal camera. You do this by clicking the little white arrow in the upper left. And let's look around for this fourth character. So there he is, but he's actually not in our shot. Let's deactivate him on the Live Link plugin. 
I'm just going to click the green dot. All of a sudden, you'll see him stop moving. And this is going to increase our frames per second. I'm also going to hide him in the World Outliner in the Unreal Engine as well. Let's double check and make sure that it's actually hidden in iClone itself. So let's stop the playback. We'll go to the Scene tab, find the character, and make sure that the little eyeball is closed. This is visibility. With that fourth character hidden, we now should see some improvements in playback. Now on Unreal, we're gonna go and set the editor active camera for the viewport. And now we have our optimized scene. Now that shot was easy to optimize, but what happens when you have a crowd scene? What happens when you have four or more characters? As we play through this scene, you'll definitely see that the frame rates are affected not only in iClone, but in Unreal as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna optimize this by only recording two characters at a time. In Unreal, let's go to the Window menu and select Sequence Recorder. Now we're gonna be using this Add button here, but first we have to select the characters we wanna do. Now on frame one here, I'm gonna select the two characters I wanna record. First is the old man, and then in the World Outliner, I'll select the backpacker and click the Add button. In iClone, we need to actually deselect the young man and the Wraith, which is the soldier. And we should also turn off their visibility. So we'll go to the Scene tab and turn off their visibility as well. Now that we're just using two characters, we can see that it affects the playback rate, we're running at a solid 60 frames per second. Now let's go back to the first frame and then go to the Sequence Recorder in Unreal and hit the Record button. Now as soon as we do this, we'll see a countdown before the sequence starts recording. Now we're gonna to wanna to hit play as soon as the countdown is done. Let it play through the sequence. And now click stop all in the sequence recorder. In the lower right hand corner, you'll see an option to open the recorded sequence. Go ahead and click on it. And then inside of the sequencer here, we can open up the character folder and see our keyframes that we recorded. Now, if we scrub the timeline here, we can actually see the animation playing. Now let's close the sequencer and go back to the sequence recorder and just click remove all to get rid of the characters we've already done. Now we're gonna select the Wraith and the young man and click add. Now let's go over to iClone and we're gonna turn on the soldier and the young man and turn off the old man and the backpacker. Now we need to go to the live link plugin and turn on the young man and the soldier and turn off the old man and the backpacker. Now that we've done this, we can hit play to check the frame rate. And it's running at over 50 frames per second, so we are good for capturing the motion properly. In iClone, I'm gonna click to make sure we're on the first frame. And then we can go to the sequence recorder in Unreal, click the record button, and as soon as it's done counting down, we'll hit play in iClone and we'll play through the sequence. As soon as our sequence is done playing, we're gonna go ahead and hit stop all in the sequence recorder again. Now we can click to open the recorded sequence and inside the characters folder, you're going to find the two characters that we just recorded. Now we can scrub the timeline and see the animation play. Now let's hide some characters here. We're gonna go ahead and hide the old man and the backpacker. And you'll notice that there are duplicates of the young man and the wraith. This is because during the recording process, it duplicates the characters. Now I wanna select both of the characters that we just recorded. I'll hold down shift and select them both and then right click and go to copy. Now let's go to the content browser and find the first sequence that we recorded. Now, once we find the sequence, we can just double click on it to open it up, select the characters folder, right click and go paste. Let me close these up here so we can see all four characters. Now we can scrub the playhead and you can see that all our characters are animated and are in the same scene. One of the last things we wanna do is make sure that all the keyframes line up. So they're all starting at the same time. Let's line up the soldier and the young man so their animation starts at the same time. 
So what we're going to want to do is we're going to actually going to open up these characters here. We're going to click these little triangles on the left hand side. And we're looking for the animation track and the transform track. And we're going to hold down control to select each of these tracks. So once you're sure that you have the transform track and the animation track for both characters selected, you're simply just going to want to drag them to the left slightly on the timeline. When you're using the sequencer, it always defaults to 30 frames per second. Now we captured this around 60 frames per second. So you might have to move your tracks back and forth slightly to figure out the best position. Let's go full screen and set this to 60 frames per second so we can get a little bit more accuracy as we're dragging these tracks back and forth on the timeline. Now feel free to take as much time as necessary on this step because this really determines how well everything lines up. So as I test the sequence, everything seems to be fine. Now the last thing I want to do is actually move the in and out points of the sequencer so it stays in this area. So I'll just grab the in point and move it and grab the out point and move it so it frames all the keyframes. So let's see how our scene turned out. I'll turn on looping and hit play. So now you have all the information that you need to render with iClone Live Link and the Unreal Engine. Now that you know how to take a shot and break it down into simpler segments, so let's summarize the process. First, we're gonna to wanna to stop any physics simulations. Next, we're going to want to set our quality mode to minimal mode. Next, you're going to want to close down any windows that you may not need. Now, if your computer is still too slow, you might want to consider a solution where you have multiple computers. Next is program focus. You want to make sure you select iClone so the system is focused on it. This will ensure that it will run as fast as possible for your recordings. And last but not least, you want to make sure that both programs are running at at least 50 frames per second for proper recording. Now, to save resources, you're going to want to unlink any characters or objects that are not currently being used in the shot. And if possible, delete hidden meshes. Even hidden meshes take up memory. Now when recording multiple characters, record two characters at a time at maximum. You can always do multiple recordings and copy and paste each character's track into a single sequence afterwards. So there you have a complete overview of the entire process.